Good morning, this is Muhammad Samuel Katouri of Uncle K Live TV and Radio. With us here joined today is the one and only Mr. Kurshid Hassan Khan, aka known as Uncle K. Born in Karachi, has, uh, in 1946, 8th of October, he has moved to Dubai in 1966 under the British rule of the Trucial State. Uh, a student pupil of the current, uh, the father of the current ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Rashid Al Maktoum. Good morning, Mr. Ankake. Hi, good morning to you. Thanks for inviting me. And uh, I was excited, but now I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> it's okay. It's you, okay. You'll be probing my past history. No. And you'll be opening my, you know, I'll have to take out my skeletons from the closets <laughs> which I have buried and hidden. But never mind. If I want to, the youth to learn something from what I have gained in my life. No so problem. please continue. Yeah. Try. Okay. Now, Uncle K, you have been here for, in Dubai for a long time, mm -hmm. since before even the unition of, Dubai, of the United Arab Emirates. That's correct. And uh, from then and now, things have changed a lot. Before, we can say Dubai was not the city in the world. It was never known. And today we can call it the city on the map. What is your opinion regarding the changes that happened from then and now in the United Arab Emirates of oh, Dubai? Oh, I wish Dubai. I had the time to explain all that. There is so much to talk about the way this country has evolved. You know, it's. I am a human uh, nature uh, student, okay, and mm -hmm. I study human nature. So. Going through all the leaders, I had the good fortune of not talking to the Queen of England, but face to face. Queen Elizabeth, when she was, I think, 19 or 20, she came to visit our country. And uh, then uh, Lyndon Bean Johnson, the Vice President of USA, face to face, right in front like that. Then uh, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, the Prime Minister of Pakistan. Then this uh, Sheikh. Rashid bin Maktoum, whom I consider my mentor because he really molded my life and I was at that critical age of 20 when I came here. I am, you know, you are gullible, you are impressionable and uh, at that time it was British rule and our visa was given by a British embassy and we had to use the British Airways, it was known as BOAC at that time, British Airways Overseas Corporation which is BA now. So we came by that thing and then the way Sheikh Rashid used to go into with come and go to the hotel where I was working. I was a trainee hotel management guy. So there was no not I think one Land Rover or two Land Rover of his personal guards. He was openly driving on the road. Nobody would bother whether the Sheikh is going or then you know special security and entourage and protocol nothing with this guy the, if you if you are familiar with dubai there is a hotel here known as carlton tower which was built in front of me it was at that time dubai carlton that's why where also i worked carlton then is. they built the sharjah carlton they sent me there we had a french general manager he took me there i was there from the opening of that hotel so behind that uh, dubai uh, carlton tower there is a bench still there all these local landlords and all they used to sit there in, in their majlis evening having their kawa and talking so sheikh rashid his people all his baldia and the baldia used to rule at that time the sheikh's uh, office was the baldia the dubai municipality mm -hmm. from there they everything was done by the baldia the transport the police everything because that was the ruler's court at that time now that changed uh, no, the every department is different now so but the sheikh when he used to be in the hotel i was selected by the security the only person who could serve the sheikh so i used to you know the kharof mashi and all these oh, things yes. and, and the, the sheikh i was admired him because he, he would make the british use their hands to eat i see he, he kept his traditions you know he would always eat with his hands and the british they had to follow the custom they could not watch the sheikh Although they were the rulers ruling this place, but he was the sheikh of this country. He was the ruler of Dubai. So I, I was the one to take the things out of the kharoof, you know, the rice, by the spoon. But the meat I had to break by my hand. 
and put in his plate and then give the plate to them. So I, he was a wonderful person then when he used to get the time, you know, to come and sit in the lounge, in the lobby. He would sneak out because always he was surrounded, always surrounded by these people. So there he would open up with me. He One, one question, two questions, he realized that I had a very vast uh, grasp of the worldly affairs. So he would throw a question, what do you think of the present Prime Minister? What do you think of that thing? And I would reply and he would enjoy it. It was like a game and I was learning from it. Mm -hmm. One pa I'll con I know you have a short time and we are constrained, otherwise this will take long. The last thing which I remember, his word and his advice, Khurshid, don't ever leave Dubai. We are going very, very far. I see. Look at his, I mean, his visions, the way they were planning everything. Dubai in the Middle East and in this whole area, India, Pakistan included, was the only place which had this Shindaga tunnel under the water tunnel. At One that time, tunnels. imagine yes. at that time, it was a wonder of the world. They built it. And that port, Sheikh, Ra Sheikh Rashid port, the ship would come from the Angrej in three days in the port. While the Mam port used to take six months. I see. The advancement these people had, I just cannot imagine. Ah, sorry, I know you are getting impatient no with, the, with the next question, so let's... You must have had a lot of experience and a very uh, amazing uh, yeah, moment in your life to meet uh, such a high person in a high position and to be under his mentor. And you got the experience of, uh, to, of ex experiencing at first hand the Emirati culture. That's correct. That's, that's, correct. Uh, that's near to my heart. And uh, by the way, some people have this, you know, they have this sand clock which they turn over when the sand turns Yes. Down. That was the old time. I calculate time by the growth of my hair, how <laughs> far I was bald. So I know I calculate all the time when I had hard, half my head full. And so Emirati culture from that time to now, it has changed. Everything changed. Human people, the countries, nations, they evolve. They have to live according to the times. At that time, it was only land rovers here because it was so sand, sandy place, very few roads. Even from going to Sharjah from here, we had to plan it one week in advance. Yes. Because once we went to Sharjah, all the highway was okay. It was two lane highway only. But once you turn to go to any building, sand. All times. Parking all area times. was always sand and you would get stuck. And I admire and I, I, you know, pray for these young Emirati people at that time. They were so hospitable. They will see any car stuck in the sand. They will rush, tell you to get out of the car, sit in. And they had a technique with the gear and all, yes. how to get that car out of that. And we, we were just frustrated. We had, we'll have to remove the tire. Maybe there will be a jack. Maybe there will be a tow truck. But these people will sit. The accelerator clutch if it is a manual, manual car yes, they cars. had that dexterity to gear you know gear like this like this like this like and they will take it out it is said to be that yeah. uh, when going from Sharjah to Dubai it is considered a travel by itself at all times it, now it highways streets are open things have changed, things have changed from yeah. time to then to now and when you think about it if you went to Dubai and Sharjah, that's considered the travel itself. Exactly. So, how do you maintain your uh, your fresh, your, gr your great outlook with, with this world and how it changes and wh wh what do you see in, 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 the, in what you call, let's say, the changes that's happening? Do you find it that is good? Is it bad? Is it neutral? Is it balanced? Very good question. Very good question. I'll put it in a short, uh, this thing, because it's a vast subject, but I'll just give you in three sentences, I'll cover the whole thing. I hope I can. Uh, number one, God has blessed me with the times. God, God was molding me for some purpose that uh, he pushed me through Kodak, he pushed me through Polaroid. He, I mean, uh, computer at that time when there were no hard disks, there were no faxes, there were no, uh, it was only telex, so I had to learn from telex and the computer, I used to use tape recorder for the backup yes. of the things. So God was taking me through these stages because maybe there is a mission I ha he wants me to accomplish. So he was giving me these touches, you know, of all these things. And the interest of human nature, I was so interested in human nature that 
Luckily, when I was in my country, my elder brother-in-law, he was the IG police of the country. So he would, uh, because of him, I could go and visit jails, the, you know, the people who have this sentence, death sentence passed. They're just waiting for that date to come, to meet them and interview them. That's my psychology. I used to study human nature. What, what is the feeling of that guy who's going to die after two days and all? They were so repentive, so repentive, even if I would enter their cell, they would fall down on their head, in, on my feet. They were so repentive, please, God forgive us, God forgive us. So that's human nature. When you know you are going to die, then you forget, remember all the prayers and everything. Otherwise, they were murderers and, you know, decoits and stealers and all. So. When studying, I said I'll give you in three sentences. No. So my my uh, outlook on life is: be present to the present time, synchronize with that time. Don't try to be out. You be out of the crowd. Be unique, but don't embarrass everybody by being so unique that they will think you are. You think you are you are somebody greater than the people surrounding you. You have to be in step with them. Don't be out of step, and. But I said, when you see the present times, be sure that it will change. There, as in any religion, any religion, you pick up the book and you will find this sentence that after every darkness, there is light. After every light, there is darkness. It's a cycle. Day follows, night follows day, day follows night. So it's like a day for you and a day against you. Against you. So, I mean, when you are in depression, when you are down, when you are grieving, always remember there is good tidings also coming. It's a promise from God. It's so these are we are living in cycles and times which I hope when my time comes also, then you are free for eternity. When you pass away from this world, then there is no time, no boundaries for you, and you don't have to go through these tests. These are tests. World is a test. If you think that it's a Happiness all the time impossible. There will be test, and if there is no test, there is no unhappiness. How will you compare your happy times? You need some reference. Okay, those. You see, every time you meet somebody from my age, they will say the past yes, days yes. were very good. They, those were good times. Yes, yes. Things change because in my father used to make as a businessman. He used to make I think four hundred rupees, and we were about forty people in the family. You know, his sisters, my aunties, our things and other families. He was the only breadwinner. And we were so happy every each celebration, new clothes. And we used to get the bread, you know, the corn and all these by sacks and the, the cooking oil like this, you know, the big drums. Yes. There was store. They, there was a big store of food stuff. So they would calculate this is enough for three months, <laughs> six months like this. So, and even clothes, they used to bring by by these reams. Reams, yes, yes. They will put it there and then they will cut according to the person and start sewing it. Those were time, but those were times at that time. Now we have to live according to our times. We cannot say that this is a bad time. Maybe the in invention, the advancement we have seen is, I'm lucky that I've seen from the radio with these big, big walls, like a big box. Yes, yes. And to this TV and the transistor and these changes. small things, it changes. But I have one thing I will caution you. I mean, I'm say cycle, this also will stop at a time. We'll go back to the cave age. Again, it will start. Because the proof is there when you see the pyramids, you see the other old historic things. They were more advanced than us. We think we are very advanced. They were more advanced than us. We, because the, the, we can't get those documents or the proof, but they even knew how to fly. Because if you see the crop circles, you can only see them from a height, from a plane. Down you will not know, it's just a circle, you know what, but how did they make it into that perfect, perfect geometrical shape? Only from a plane you can see that. So there was also a question people ask: was God an astronaut? Maybe an alien came? and showed us all that gave us that knowledge that they could levitate these big stones and make, build the pyramid you look at the tons of weight of the one stone theories came yes yeah and then they say that the gap between those stones is so perfect that you cannot put a paper inside that 
paper thin cannot put inside how could they do it they have a more advanced than us so we should not gloat oh we have invented this this is artificial life they were not artificial the marvels of the pyramids are very yeah. beautiful and to this day one can look at them and still be amazed and vividly at the pyramid but with such outlook of yours you must have had great expectations great 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 it must be rewarding for you it so is. with such rewards i mean there there's supposed to be someone in, in that point you had a bad experience and it has uh, to and you had, had to handle it in a way that day follows night of course i had and i'm not embarrassed about it i'm not embarrassed about it because i was expecting whenever i'm happy i'm also expecting that there will be sadness but i don't take it to the point where i become depressed depression in our religion as islam is haram and in any religion i don't know what word they call it but no religion ex- likes you to be depressed because then you are not putting faith in the god you believe in when you have faith in your god don't be depressed there will be good tidings things will come you will be pulled out again from that and misery and all sometime it is our own human created because of our ego of our, our selfishness and people who think that they are so clever that they are making their own bread they are so clever that they are grabbing the money from the market the other people are fools are wrong everybody has a right to that food and all if you are doing it you are losing faith with god that god gives you that you know our subsistence is through god nobody else can do it any religion i whenever i say any religion because if you know we have formed this uncle k tv on the premise that there are, every religion is good if it puts you in the right direction mm-hmm. you understand you may like coffee i may like tea they say one man's food is another man's poison you may hate me for drinking coffee i may hate you for drinking tea i would say what is in a tea why you drink it if you like it it's up to you same mm-hmm. with the religion if that religion keeps you from the wrong path do it don't change anything for somebody else is saying because you never know the reason behind the person who's trying to tell you something you see there are vested interests also there are many reasons why they will force why, otherwise there would be no wars on religions the world is suffocated with these religious wars everybody thinks they are more pious than the other person that's not the way with god god we are all god's children we are all god's uh, uh, creation sorry i'm not going to lecture on this so no. better not start me on this you you've asked me your question i didn't answer sorry the bad points in my life i'll tell you that uh, i'll give you a fun example of dubai when people say dubai you know when we came we were told that the roads are paved with gold bricks the footpath they have gold bricks and the money grows on the trees so we were coming with that imagination we didn't know the hard life you have to live here i have passed a time when i used to eat one can of sardines it was at that time 75 fills and my friend the the kiosk owner that uh, cafeteria owner south indian he used to give me a sambuli that big bread you know mm-hmm. free from his side i would open that put the sardine in that was my sandwich for 24 hours tea he would give me any time tea they they because you we were friends and you know we the any he, it the, this place is so hospitable whether it's arab whether it's any nation when you go to somebody they'll offer you drink juice water tea they nobody minds that how much you have never never nobody will ever be stingy on that so tea i used to have every time tea is my main uh, main thing, thing. so bad well, times come but well, i why he was he used to like me and used to give my example to everybody not to embarrass me but to encourage other people in my position that look he's always smiling he's always laughing he's <laughs> never depressed why because this is a test everything is a test i have to fulfill that test to the best you do whatever you do to the best of your ability that's the reality is even poverty is proof to them okay i can be power, poor but i am not depressed because i know somebody is there the almighty is always there always there always there if yours goes with tea then i go with the coffee <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, if you think about it with all of that you lived in the in the in the beginning of dubai let's say the emerging the boom of dubai or emirates and say generation from there and the next generation and this generation has changed a lot in terms of youth people grew up 
people had different cultures, new things came in, new things came out, uh, different things came out, sorry. So the youth now is not the same as the youth of before. The yeah, technology has entered uh, what you call um, construction, uh, moder modern civilization has entered, and it grew. But this change, can, it can be said to be rapid. So the youth will, will rapidly change with that change. How, what advice would you give for the youth of today, for their uh, future and you. their future future? Future future and their generation and their generation, very right. I'll give you, start with one thing, when you say youth, I will take all the nationalities who are settled here, not only Emiratis. Okay. Okay, Emiratis have a different test, it's a test for everybody. Somebody got test with giving them billions of dollars, how they manage it and what is there, it's all reaction, the world is reaction how you react to a situation. When a ball is thrown at you, how you catch it and how you pass it on again to somebody else. That's what God is checking you on. So youth of any nation, I will tell one thing that people who change their traditions, they try to change their culture, their dress, to become somebody else because they are richer than you, should never, never be done. You will lose your identity, you will lose your confidence. I have seen people here going into a thobe and all, oh, they act like Emiratis and because people in the metro and all would respect them, oh this is a local. Local, they have different faces, you can immediately make out who is a genuine local Emirati. They have a different way of walking, they have, I mean they are, okay, now the Emiratis, it, it, I don't blame them, any nation with this capital, with the money, the affluence, may become a little bit proud and they have a right to be proud they have created such a vast thing that other people are getting benefit of it people like me and you mm -hmm. they have created it for us okay now when i still admire the emiratis the youth because oh, with all this culture all this influence all the money that three three cars in their garages they have not lost one touch about them and i admire them for that is they still respect old age. It has been beaten into them by their parents. I am a Pakistani. I go anywhere and if an Emirati youth is there, they will open a door for me. They will get up and open a door for me. I am surprised and shocked and believe me that blessings which I give them may God really fulfill it for them. Because they don't have to open that door for me. They don't even have to look at me, they can ignore me. But because of my age, then when the age is there, they don't care for the nationality or anything. They don't care for your wealth or anything. This has been taught to them. This I admire. And you see an Emirati, ever seen any Emirati going into a suit and a tie and all? They never change their dress. They respect the old traditions. Mm -hmm. That, you see, if from our country if we wear our dress and from India if they wear their you know dhoti or this tight pajama we call it. America and all they look at you, they stare at you but any Marathi going to the thobe and all they respect. Oh look he has his own traditions, he's following his tradition and they are not rude outside, they are well educated, they have been given that, in, you know they have been given a view of all the world, how they behave how to talk, they are very well behaved. And the linguistic ability I admire, they can speak many languages. They don't yes. force you to stick in Arab, Arabic like Saudi Arabia. So I think that covers this question. Uh, yeah. If yeah. it must, then it will. But uh, future, let's, let's say the future. The future is, is keen to be unknown. But a man always plans for the future even though he does not know what's his next step, what will happen. Mm -hmm. Where do you see Uncle K live TV and radio going in the future? Uh, my, if you had asked me about myself, I was not very keen on that future because I know my time is near now. But when you talk about Uncle K live TV and radio, it's the people like you who will be looking after it. It's a tradition we have started and it will go far because we are spreading peace. We are not using this TV radio for vulgar things, for songs and for dances. I'm not blaming them, that's another thing, but we are not part of that. We are, we have, this TV is not for entertainment. 
the best entertainment we can provide is knowledge when uh, if knowledge can entertain you you on the right track with these lectures with so many other speakers we'll be bringing they will be telling their thing can you uh, it's a secret i'm sharing with you if i write to these big big celebrities who are speakers and all three of them have agreed to come on their own expense all i have to do is to provide accommodation hotel they'll come for one hour one hours lecture or two hours then they may have their own they may do whatever they want in dubai but they'll give me that two three hours mm -hmm. for me to broadcast this thing just to help my tv go up because they like what i'm doing so this will go far and it will be branched out in many countries in different languages now al already i'm very very far behind from my schedule to start a malayalam language urdu language arabic language i need because this need, needs to be fed to the people those people who are coming here they are like me when i came here especially the blue collar white collar middle class lower middle class people because you no know, somebody unfortunately our countries are so engrossed in their own problems they don't have that time to teach these people courtesy manners how to behave outside because every citizen of any country is an ambassador of that country people judge your country from a person of that country how they are behaving so i would like this tv channel to teach them how to behave in the metro what language to use and how to oh, i mean sit in the bus and sometimes i mean it will go too long i think that's what this tv will be expanding to it will become a very very interesting tv and people will be hearing it on the mp3 also with our radio well it might be said that knowledge peace and unity is the message of this live tv and radio well thank you uncle k for this amazing interview thank you for your time for for having enough time to give us a sit with us and talk no mamma thank you for bearing with me and tolerating me for so <laughs> no. long and i hope my viewers are also not bored but uh, you did a very good job and uh, i hope you give me more opportunity to open up open in the future always the best dear okay. viewers thank you thank you very much for watching this interview my name is mohammed sami and my director anjul from uncle k tv and radio signing out thank you